Hey, what's going on? This video is unprecedented because it's going to be so dang good and because we're talking about precedence, which pretty much just determines in what order different operations happen inside of our programs. And this is pretty much exactly the same to how it is in math class. So if you remember this from math class, then you are good. Do you need help advancing your coding skills? Check out my new program, Code Breakthrough. Code Breakthrough offers hands-on learning with Python and data structures, algorithms, and interview challenges. With a supportive community and regular new content, Code Breakthrough will help you get hired or advance your career. For a limited time launch special, use the link in the description to get 20% off your subscription. See you there. So for example, when we say five plus three times two, the three times two actually happens first before the plus. So it's not always left to right. And the rules are, is that multiplication and division happen first from left to right, and then addition and subtraction. So let's create a complex expression and try to figure out what value is going to be given. So maybe we do three times two plus five divided by two minus, or let's go with, let's go with even numbers just to make it easier, divided by two, and then minus one. So are you able to guess what the output is here? So what is it? Three times two is gonna happen first because we're looking for multiplication or division. So that's gonna be six. And then this is gonna happen next, six divided by two. So that's gonna be three. So really we have six plus three minus one. So what's that gonna be? That's gonna be eight. Hitting enter, we get 8.0. Now, there is an interesting thing here that maybe you noticed, and I just wanted to call it out. Sometimes we'll get a whole number like 11, and then other times we'll get a number, but it'll have a dot zero in it. And that's gonna happen anytime we're working with operators that might return a fractional part. You know, if we do something like five divided by two, well, in this situation, we get a fractional part. But if we're doing addition, there's no way for us to get a fractional part, so it's just going to give us an integer, a number without any decimal value. Now what next? The next thing I wanna show you guys is that you can use parentheses to force any particular evaluation to happen first. So if we go through the same example, but let's say we want the addition and the subtraction to happen first, here's what it would look like. We would type everything out the same but when we have any addition, we would use parentheses. And then whenever we have any subtraction, we would also use parentheses. So it looks something like so. So now the division and the multiplication is going to happen after the parentheses. So anything inside of parentheses always happens first. Press enter and we get 24, which completely changes the answer. And another thing with parentheses is sometimes if you have something that's complex, you can throw those parentheses in there just for clarity's sake. So that way people can visually see what's happening. So like when I look at this, you know, I can figure out what, what happens first, you know, just cause I understand which operators evaluate first. However, if you are doing something really complex, it might not be as clear. So you might just want to throw in some extra parentheses, even if it doesn't change the value. So we can parentheses around the multiplication, and then we can say plus six and divide that by two, and then put the division inside of parentheses and then subtract by one. So although the result's going to be exactly the same, visually, it's much more appealing. You know, I like to look at it, it's sexy. All right, maybe that's a little bit too far. However, when you read this, you can easily see what's gonna happen first. So hitting enter, and we get 8.0, same exact result. But clearly this happens, and then this happens, and then we subtract one from the answer. So much more visually appealing. So those are the two primary benefits of parentheses. One, they force certain operations to happen first, and two, they can add clarity to our application even if they don't change anything. You can use parentheses anytime, and you can even go a little extreme. I'm not saying you should do this, but you can put parentheses inside of parentheses and it's totally okay. So I can put five plus five inside of three sets of parentheses and we still get 10. 
So use parentheses to your advantage whenever you need to make something clearer to you or to another developer who you're going to be working with. And just coming from someone with like 30 years of development experience, you're probably not going to know what your code does in about three weeks. So anytime you can make it extra clear, you're going to thank yourself in the future when you have to look at that code again. So do the extra work to make sure your code is clear, but you don't have to be too extreme about it. Like this is not going to help anybody. It just makes it look confusing. So, so keep it reasonable and just do whatever you can to make your code as clear as possible. So that is all I have for you in this video. We have one more video where we're going to be using the shell and then we're going to be teaching you how to create Python files. So that is very useful if you wanna do any kind of complex coding or any kind of scripting, that's how you're going to do it. So let's follow up this video with one more video talking about operators and math and then we'll get into creating files. So stay tuned and you better not forget to hit that subscribe button. You know it's my self-worth indicator here as a YouTuber so don't let me down, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you next time.